All right, the first part we'll model here is the train body. And what you kind of have to do with a more complicated shape like this is break it down into its simpler shapes. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, so it just kind of depends how you want to tackle it. And uh, as many people as would build this, if you weren't following along uh, in a tutorial video, would build this. If there were 50 people modeling it, they would model it 50 different ways and all end up with the same result. Um, so uh, as we go through these, just know that I'm going to be modeling some of these things also in ways to be efficient and show you some new tools on Fusion 360. Okay, so um, uh, the other thing is it, it's always going to be helpful even as I'm going through it on the screen for you to uh, have the uh, dimensions in front of you so you know where I'm getting my numbers from. Okay, um, so let's start with a sketch and we'll just do a sketch on the XY plane. And I'm going to um, start with uh, sketching a rectangle 0.875 inches high by uh, 2 inches wide. So that's the overall size of the train body. And then I'm going to draw a circle 1.5 inches in diameter. And let's use D for dimension and dimension that so that the height of that is 1.375 above the bottom. And also it needs to be in the middle. So we'll dimension that one inch. So that puts that circle in the middle. Um, I can finish the sketch. And then we need to go ahead and extrude a distance of 3.75 inches. Okay, so that gets us the first part of the train. And then I want to draw, flip around, and we'll draw on the back side now. So let's go ahead and create a sketch on the back side. And on the back side, I'm going to use my arc tool with a center point arc. So the first thing you do is click a center point, and then I'm going to draw an arc. I don't really care about the size, because um, then we're going to go ahead and dimension that. Um, it is a 2.35 inch radius. And the center point of that arc needs to be 0.375 above the bottom and of course it needs to be in the middle so it needs to be one inch from the sides and then I'm just going to use my line tool to sketch a line and making sure I enclose that so that I have an enclosed profile and then let's go ahead and under the modify panel let's trim off the tags on that arc Okay, now I have uh, one more dimension, just something is not fully constrained. Oh, there we go. That's because I have two lines there. So let's, somehow I ended up with an extra line. Let's make sure that line goes there. And now you'll see my sketch is fully constrained because I have a little lock button on my sketch tab in the browser on where I can see my sketch. So now, um, when I go to extrude, I want to make sure I pick both of those profiles. And we'll pull that back another 1.75 inches. And I want to make sure that I'm joining here, which was the default, but I want to make sure I'm joining and not just creating a new body, because we want this to be one single component. Okay, so let's see. Next, um, let's go ahead and on the back side, um, we could drill a hole. Um, this will be where the hitch peg goes. 
and the diameter of the hole is a quarter inch diameter and the depth is a half an inch and this is just a simple hole uh, normal tap and normal drill point and then I need to pick some reference edges the distance from the side is an inch of course and the distance from the bottom is half an inch or is nope it's 0.375 on this one okay so now I have a hole for my hitch peg um, on the front side um, we have three holes we want to drill so rather than uh, um, drill them separately we want to drill them with sketch points so I'm going to create um, sketch points and then we can dimension um, those hole locations are 0.125 inches and 0.625 inches above the bottom and the holes from the sides are 0.375 inches and of course the yeah, third hole is in the middle so that's one inch so now that I have those three points fully dimensioned now I can drill another simple hole and this time I want to make sure that I select all three of those points and my diameter is 0.125 with a depth of 0.125 Okay. Uh, I also want to drill a hole on the top. In order to drill on the top, I need a piece of paper on the top. So here I'm going to need to construct a tangent plane. So I'm going to select the top and this would allow me to rotate that around. The default puts it in at zero degrees, which is where I want it. I want to drill this so you know we can see that plane will be tangent at the top and now I can create a sketch and select that plane and again I just need to drill the hole for the stack I just need to plop one single point on that piece of paper to mention it it needs to be one inch from the sides and 0.875 from the front finish your sketch drill the hole and again this is another simple hole that's a half inch diameter and a quarter inch deep okay um, I also need what else also need um, to do the cutout where the engineer kind of sits little cut out at the back so we'll need a sketch for that so I'm just gonna eyeball a circle here close to the outside that is a one inch diameter dimension that to be a quarter inch from the outside edge and 1.75 inches from the bottom and that's exactly how it's dimensioned on the drawing sheet that we're given and then I also want to come up here and draw a tangent line that connects the outside edge and you'll notice this one here this line here is black the one at the top I must have just slightly missed 
So, and we see also my sketch is not fully constrained yet. So I must have missed a constraint here. Let's make that perpendicular to that edge because I did get it to be tangent, but I didn't draw it perpendicular. Um, so make sure that all your lines are black and fully constrained. And then uh, we could trim some of those shapes if we want. That gives us then a fully constrained profile. So now I can cut and then I want to cut instead of give specifying a distance the easiest thing to do is to say what object do I want to cut to I want to cut to the other side so then I can just select the other side without having to give it specify a distance okay and the last thing we have to do is the uh, holes for the axles and those are a tap hole so we'll go ahead and do a sketch on the side Again, I'm just going to create two points. And we'll go ahead and dimension those points. We need to be an inch from the back. We are a half inch up. And then those two points are three and a half inches apart. And I could use a horizontal constraint, which will line that other point up to be horizontal with the first point. Rather, I, I mean, I could use another half inch dimension, but when they're, uh, I know they need to be on the same level, I like using the geometric constraints that we have available up here. So then we'll finish the sketch and use the hole tool. We're going to drill two holes. This is a tapped or threaded hole. And so the size we would want to specify, we'll go down here and we need to find a quarter inch, 0.25. And it is uh, quarter 20 threads. That would be the default. And the depth of that hole, it was specified to be 0.875 inches. Okay, once we have those uh, holes modeled, we could draw that on the other side again, although it'd be easier um, if I put a mid plane in. I, I'm going to select the mid plane tool. I select one face, then the opposite face, and that puts a plane in the middle. And now, if I go to create. Down here below pattern is mirror, and I'm going to mirror the hole. So I'm going to select the uh, feature. I'm going to select features up here, mirror the hole. There's all different types of things that you can mirror, faces, bodies, components, whatever. I want to mirror the feature. Okay, and then you have to pick what plane you're going to use to mirror. So I'm going to select the mirror plane and say OK. And then you'll notice I don't have to model my holes on the other side. They're already there. Okay, and once you have that work plane that is visible, all we have to do is toggle off the visibility so that we're not looking at that plane down the middle. And finally, um, what we have left is to uh, add fillets to all the outside edges except the holes. Um, and there's kind of an order that you would want to do these in. So, and our fillets are 0.1 inches. Kind of go around and do those inside corners first. And actually, I kind of like to do those those first few and then apply some of those. So now that's starting to look like uh, what's on the title page. And now I think once you do that, you could probably just go to town putting the rest of them on. But there's a, there are a lot of small little edges.
and after you do a few of them, I've got 18 of them there, it's okay. If you want to add more, you could hit control and it can add some more fillets. And it's just a matter of getting all of those edges. And all the fillets are 0.1 inches. Okay, so there's the train body.